Okay, today I'm going to bring you this little gem of a game. It's from Game Fix Magazine by Game Publications Group. It's issue number eight, and it contains Joe Miranda's Green Line Chechnya, the current conflict in Chechnya. Um, as you can see, the cover is quite garish. Uh, let's take a quick look at the magazine itself, and then we'll look at the counters, the map, and play aids. We can look at the um, credits. The editor of the magazine was John Compton. The copy editor was Vince Blackburn because David Wood was on vacation. We have some contributing editors, Alan Emrich, uh, Keith Schlesinger, Richard Dingle. Most of these are names that are fairly <clears throat> recognizable in the hobby. Uh, the developer, chief developer was Keith Schlesinger, and art director John Compton, etc., etc. Uh, game Publications Group evolved into, or related, related to somehow, uh, One Small Step Publishing. Because um, a lot of these names... I think you can find over there in their design uh, design uh, what am I trying to say anyway we can see that uh, this issue contains from the podium battle briefs Green Line Chechnya and the game Green Line Chechnya uh, G2, Industry News, Clarifications for Red Line Korea, which I have on order. And uh, some kind of article about miniatures, I think. Or no, actually it's Rules for Scenario Generation in Rebel Yo. And Behind the Lines with Chris Perello. I think it's an interview. I haven't really read the magazine that closely. I've just paid attention to the article on Chechnya and the game. So, magazine, uh, it's got color, photographs, three columns, uh, let's see what else, this is an article on the conflict itself, talks about the Russian army as it was back in 1995, and talks more about the Russian uh, order of battle and uh, the Russian forces than it does anything uh, regarding the uh, Chechnyan forces so um, or the conflict itself actually uh, so it's yeah uh, eh, I don't find it of much use but you might if you uh, should stumble across a copy of it then we come to the game itself it is based on the red line Korea game system. That's partly why I'm picking it up. The other part is uh, the game system in both games lend themselves to oh a study of the current uh, situation in Ukraine. Uh, I kind of wanted to just kind of design a little model on the current situation over there and I thought this these two game systems uh, combined together would uh, kind of help me understand the situation now in Ukraine. Um, but that's a whole other topic. So we have a depiction of the units. We have a sequence of play. It's played in weekly game turns. Each game turn is further subdivided into a random events phase followed by the Russian and resistance player turns. We have random events. We have the Russian player turn in which we he has a reinforcement segment, the movement segment, combat segment, and logistical and recovery segments. Then we have the resistance player, his game turn or player turn. Then we have the game turn completion, fog of war, can't look at the other guy's play uh, units, and so on and so forth.
pretty much standard rules with little twists uh, here and there on common uh, common rules and rule systems that we've come to <clears throat> what am I trying to say here that we've come to recognize as standard in the hobby uh, here are tables for ground attack with aircraft we have psychological warfare table combat and ground strikes with aircraft and psychological warfare and other things uh, can cause a unit to flip over to its uh, weaker side let's see what's on the back of the counters yeah just a weaker side and they can be brought back with the uh, rec in the recovery phase we have breakthroughs where you can uh, attack again move and attack again different scenarios we scenarios we have free Chechnya rebel first strike and Caucasian liberation there's logistics which have to follow uh, supply lines and tactical paths to a friendly supply source. Then we have reduced units and recovery and you roll dies, you roll a die <clears throat> on the uh, units recovery against the units recovery value and you will uh, or it's cohesion rating, I guess it's called. You roll a die equal to or less, you uh, recover to your full strength side. Um, as you can see on the sample land unit, you have a combat strength for attack and defense, cohesion rating for recovery, and a movement allowance. And at the top here, we have what the different colors of the units are, and identification of some of the, um, some of the units themselves. Then we go back to the victory points chart, the victory level chart, and political points chart. It gives you a little sequence of play uh, outline at the bottom. <clears throat> the rest of the game is not much to write home about. Um, one thing about Game Fix magazines and their editorials, um, they're very snotty and um, just, I don't know, they feel unprofessional to me. Um, lots of little snide comments and stuff like that. So um, here are some clarifications from Redline Korea, Irata. And we talk about uh, Rebel Yell, <clears throat> a game of theirs that was, I think, fairly well done uh, for its time. Interview with Chris Perello and huh, Train Key for Rebel Yell. I wonder if that was not included in the uh, original game itself, but I don't know. don't have the game. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the magazine. Um, I don't think much of the magazine itself. I just care about the games inside of it and what I can glean from the uh, <clears throat> articles on the particular games. I've had two or three of their magazines and found them all to be lacking in content and the games themselves are mediocre at best, but... Um, Something draws me to them. Not sure what it is. Probably my OCD on just wanting to collect uh, games in general. So, anyway, that pretty much wraps up the magazine. So, we'll move on to the counters. Oh, one other thing I should point out. The game was supposed to come with a Russian Ops display. The Russian player uh, victory and stuff is uh, measured by political points and various actions that you take cost political points um, for both players but mainly the Russian player and um, based upon those points at the end of the game uh, that determines uh, 
<clears throat> how well the Russian player did and the victory levels and stuff. So, um, but one thing uh, the game didn't include was the Russian Ops display. Like I mentioned, um, they said they'd reprint it in a future issue, which I always find that to be just um, a way to get you to buy a magazine so you can get the errata for it. Um, I think that's a cheesy way of doing things. Um, you should be able to request a copy of Errata, <clears throat> um, and they should send it to you at no charge, because, you know, I'm not going to pay, this magazine, uh, clocked in at about seven bucks USA, or USD, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to pay another seven dollars to, uh, get the Errata, but anyway, I digress. What we have is a forces available box. The Russian player will have uh, units that are placed in there and he'll pay a political cost to put them into the ready box. At the bottom we have the um, air boxes where they can be placed on ground support or close support. And once they're used, they go to the used box, obviously, and then from there they'll go to the ready box. There is no penalty. Uh, it's just basically a air recycling uh, system. So anyway, I made up my own and uh, that's that. Here we have a look at the counter sheet that comes in the game. I'm not sure how many counters it uh, are included, but um, looks like a hundred or so. Anyway, like it said uh, in the magazine, the left number is its attack and defense value, the middle number is its cohesion rating, and the number to the right is its movement point allowance. At the bottom we have the Russian units uh, in kind of a grayish color. Uh, then we have the Caucasian Partisans, the Georgian units, if uh, that uh, province uh, enters the game. Then we had the Islamic Brotherhood units, and then at the top we had the Chechenian units. It's uh, in front of the counters, and on the back we have reduced values and such. So, like I said, they'll have to roll their uh, cohesion rating or less to recover during the recovery phase so anyway the counter is pretty pretty much okay um, uh, they're what we would call serviceable or no I guess it's functional is the term now for substandard or basic uh, artwork and design I just call them okay Usable, that's a good term. They're usable. Now we'll take a look at this uh, work of art here, the map. It's like 11 by 20, 17, 17 by 22. That's it. Math is hard. Um, we have Chechnya prominently displayed. And the Russian, uh, back then it was uh, the Russian Federation, I guess. Same, same as today. And we have, uh, I'm not even, we have Georgia at the very bottom. Pull over here. And a turn of record track and political points track. It serves multiple purposes. Uh, we have Georgia. And then we have Ingush, Ingushita, Ingushita, Ingush. Ingushisha, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it correctly. I'll probably just call it Ingush. Um, that'll be easy for me and show my ignorance of foreign, uh, foreign names. And up there at the top, we have a terrain key. And then we have the title of the game. Green Line Chechnya without any kind of border or box or indicator that that is indeed the uh, name of the game. Uh, anyway, production values are very uh, substandard, I would say, um, from my point of view. Now, you may uh, enjoy this type of map, and that's fine. 
and we have cities and oil uh, oil refineries they're left off the terrain key so you'll just have to I think there's a note somewhere or some errata or something that says that they're left off the terrain key but anyway they're oil facilities um, and Grozny the capital um, covers two hexes not sure what the scale of the game is let's run through that real quick game scale 11 kilometers across and each turn is about one week of operations so that is about it for the components we will probably go ahead and uh, start playing the game in my next video and just see what this uh, offering has well this game has to offer us um, I think that's about it for now I've taken up enough of your time with my ramblings um, gosh that's a horrible looking map anyway um, but it should be usable different terrain types are uh, let me see here I don't have my glasses on so You'll have to uh, pardon me. Uh, clear terrain. Sand is this? Uh, is this sand? No, this is rough. Sand is going to be up here by uh, an unnamed body of water. Uh, along this area here is sand, and you know the cities and towns. Towns are little red dots. Mountains. Where are our mountains down here? This is mountainous terrain. Um, the green lines represent the borders, obviously, and the brown lines are the lines of communication where you'll trace your supply and stuff. So, anyway, I think that's about it. And I'll let you get back to whatever it was you were doing. And when I return, we will start gameplay. So, until then, take care.